As of right now, there's no shortage of Disney princesses, but that might not be the case forever if these royals don't start reproducing soon. Ariel is currently the only princess in the Disney universe who has a child, and for a while, it seemed like the other princesses were snubbed out of a family due to a lack of movies. But that doesn't make any sense if you really think about it. Ariel had her daughter Melody in her first sequel film. Meanwhile, there are characters like Cinderella and Jasmine who have had three sequels as well as spin-off shows, shorts, and novels, and they don't have any kids. Well, it turns out that the reason why Ariel is the only Disney princess with a kid might run deeper than the water that she first came out of, and it might involve a relationship with her own mother as well as Walt Disney's own regrets in life. Believe it or not, Ariel might have wanted to have children ever since she was a child herself considering she had a loving mother of her own. While Athena might not have appeared in The Little Mermaid, her essence was still there as they spoke of her, and throughout the sequels there was quite a bit to learn about Queen Athena's relationship with her family. Here's an interesting fact. According to Disney trivia, Ariel was five years old when her mother died in The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning. That means that she would have spent some of her formative years with Athena and learned from her mother's kindness. She would have seen how Athena treated others and how she did everything that she could to keep Triton, as well as Ariel's many sisters, happy and together. Perhaps this warmed Ariel to the idea of one day starting a family of her own, even if she didn't realize it at the time. Think about it. Athena was clearly the glue that held the royal family of Atlantica together. In the Little Mermaid prequel, Disney showed that almost immediately after Athena died, Triton fell apart. While he still continued to rule his kingdom, he became much more strict with his rules and with his daughters. In other words, Ariel would have watched her family all but fall apart after her mother passed away, and right then may have recognized the impactful effect that a good and kind bond can have on a family. With this knowledge in the back of her mind, once Ariel fell in love with the human prince and was finally ready, Ariel may have been subconsciously driven to start a family of her own in order to provide the same sort of care that Athena showed her. Interestingly enough, Ariel was also one of the only Disney princesses who came from a large family full of siblings and other children, and that could have provided the base for her wanting to have a family of her own, starting with her daughter Melody. As far as all of the other mainline Disney princesses are concerned, none of them had any siblings that were actually their blood relatives. For instance, Cinderella had her stepsisters, but there's no blood relation there. Belle didn't have any siblings, and neither to Jasmine, Rapunzel, Snow White, or Princess Aurora. Their parents clearly only wanted one child, unlike Athena and Triton, who wanted a big family. And that very same love for family was likely instilled into Ariel, which inevitably led her to be the only Disney princess to have a child of her own and start a family. You see, it's obvious that Ariel's mother, Athena, wanted to have a large family. Otherwise, she wouldn't have gone through the trouble of having seven children. All of them happened to be daughters, and judging by their age difference, they knew how many they wanted and when to stop reproducing. According to the ages provided by Disney, Triton and Athena had their first daughter, Athena, and then by the time she turned one, they had their second daughter Alana. They rinsed and repeated this cycle five more times until they had Ariel and then they stopped. They didn't have a single other child for the next five years and then, sadly, Athena tragically lost her life, closing that chapter for her and Triton forever. Ariel was constantly reminded what a blessing a big family could be simply because she came from one. And there's a very good chance that she thought of those blessings when she considered having a child of her own. Meanwhile, many of the other Disney princesses didn't have that same experience and because of that, their views on the family likely differed greatly from Ariel's. For the most part, none of them had a decent motherly role model in their lives, and that probably had a massive impact on how they grew up. You see, not only did Ariel have the luxury of growing up with a large family, but she also was raised by a father who didn't move on after his wife's death. Not to say that there's anything wrong with finding love and happiness again after being struck by tragedy, but that just wasn't what happened with Ariel's father. Following Athena's death, King Triton became a single father and remained that way. At least that's how Disney has shown it so far. This means that Ariel didn't have to put up with the same sort of problems that other Disney princesses did when it came to family. And those very problems may have led princesses like Cinderella to not want children of their own. Think about it, whenever a Disney princess gets a new member added to their family, it's usually not a good thing. In Cinderella's story, her mother passed away and her father quickly moved on and married the wicked lady Tremaine, who became the worst role model Cinderella could have when it comes to motherhood. And you can say, at least she had a role model, 
uncle or motherly figure, but that's not any better than the situation that other princesses were in according to their movies. Like Belle, for instance, who lost her mother at such a young age that she could hardly even remember her. Or Jasmine, whose mother was assassinated, leaving her with no one to look up to. Without a kind, matronly figure, there's a chance that none of these princesses ever even felt the need or the yearning to have children. And while there's nothing wrong with that, that's what separated Ariel from the rest of them. She had a kind-hearted mother in her life, and then when Athena sadly passed away, there was no one awful around to distort that positive image. Now, when you move into the new animated Disney films, the trend still continues with characters like Rapunzel or Anna and Elsa, but with them, the same arguments could be made. As you know, Rapunzel was literally kidnapped at birth by a crazy witch who pretended to be her mother. This means she grew up without any real family around and wouldn't have had time to learn the value of it. And much like Cinderella, Rapunzel didn't really have a positive motherly role model to inspire her to start a family in the first place. As for Anna and Elsa, they grew up without parents following the tragic accident that took their lives at sea. This led them to grow up almost entirely alone in Arendelle Castle and may have caused them to ditch the idea of starting a family in general. Though their stories are still very much in the air, with Frozen 3 announced and on the way, so you never know with them. They could be the first two to break the trend since Ariel. Now, believe it or not, there's another school of thought that involves Walt Disney himself and his views on family following a tragedy that occurred in his real life. You see, one of the biggest tragedies that happened to Walt Disney was the death of his mother, and some speculate that this was why many of his characters didn't have motherly role models. But it might go a step further than that, and sadly, her death may have been the reason why almost all of the Disney princesses have generally small families. With fewer loved ones around you, there are fewer chances that you'll be haunted by their deaths when they're gone. And according to a producer at Disney, that's exactly what Walt was, haunted. According to a story by Don Hahn, the creator of Disney was not only hurt by his mother's death, but he couldn't help but blame himself for it. Apparently, after Walt Disney had started seeing success with his enterprise, he bought a house for his parents. However, there was something wrong with the furnace when they moved in, and Walt Disney decided to have a couple of workers from his studio fix it. And according to the story told by the Disney producer, the furnace wasn't fixed right, and it continued to leak overnight. By the time their housekeeper showed up the next morning, both of Disney's parents were unresponsive. They were pulled out of the home and out onto the front lawn where they waited for the ambulance to arrive. And while Walt's father was able to recover in the hospital, his mother sadly didn't make it. Walt Disney supposedly blamed himself heavily for her death, and it's something that haunted him until the day he died. Well, it's entirely possible that the pain that he felt from losing his mom was something that led him to keep his character's family small. That way, their happily ever after could last as long as possible. That being said, the creator of the House of Mouse has been deceased for almost 60 years, so the fact that the trend has continued is a bit strange. Then again, Ariel wasn't created until 23 years after the death of Mr. Disney, which is probably why she was able to be written into the role of motherhood. Had he still been alive, the entire Melody storyline may have been off limits, and Ariel would have been just another Disney princess without a child. The only thing left to ask is, do you think there's a deeper reason for the fact that Ariel was the only Disney princess who had a child? Let me know in the comments below.